What's up guys, welcome back to another video with me, Hamza Sheikh. This video is quite unique, I haven't done anything like this before. Um, so I was actually out meeting one of my friends and fellow YouTuber, Thomas Roundtree, who I'm sure many of you have heard of, if you haven't, got his link in the description. And we were just chatting, we were just meeting up for the second time, and we were just kind of talking about stuff related to YouTube and architecture and content creation. It ended up turning into a bit of a YouTube masterclass, and uh, I ended up asking Tom a lot of questions, and we discussed our own opinions about how to have a very successful YouTube channel. Enjoy the conversation, and I apologize in advance because the audio wasn't great, because like I said, we didn't plan this video. So I hope you enjoy it, and I've put subtitles on there so that you don't miss any information. Enjoy. This one? Yeah. Nice. Nicely done. Video, it does well. But in your perspective, in your experience, what makes a video do really well? Some kind of structure so that the video flows smoothly, there's some kind of story behind it. But I would say not to over plan it because you end up spending way too much time. Wait, so it's just structure it, but don't over structure it. Yeah, so literally, quick plan, like I said, plan out eight to ten minute video. I want to include this, this, intro here, intro here. I want to talk about this topic, I want to talk about that. Make sure it all flows. Think about the transitions between those moments in the video. So you might be sat down talking in the microphone and then you're out, out and about filming something. Think about this transition so it's not just a hard cut between the two and it makes no sense. It's all got to flow, nice story, um, good music. I think is a good one, and the tempo of the video. Usually, when a fast tempoed video does better, because obviously people have got a certain level of engagement, people get distracted quickly. That's one of the things I really realised, which was I, I I felt that I was doing the videos like quite quick, the pace was quick, but then when I started editing it, I was like, it's so slow. Like I, I I'm I made this video, but I'm still like losing interest. So the videos have got quicker. But the one, you know, there's one thing happened with me. Yeah? One video which I thought would literally do the best did the worst, and I have no way of explaining that. But the, one of the things that stands out to me is that I posted it at a really strange time. How much does like actually posting at the right time have an effect on how that, well that video does? I think posting it at the right time and getting the engagement to begin with is probably the most important thing. Getting the initial views off, off the bat, upload the video, get good engagement. Upload at a time and post on your story at a time when people are engaging with your Instagram. It helps massively because once you get the videos going, you build the momentum, algorithms, enjoys, sees that people are interacting with that video, commenting on it, liking the video. And long term? Long term, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. I'm uploading it will eventually catch up. Yeah, it, 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 I don't think it really matters. But in, if you think about it, if you're getting good views to begin with, normally the momentum builds. If you, begin, if you start a video, that doesn't get many views to begin with. It has to build up momentum, it has to get going at some point. Whereas if you start with really good momentum, really good engagement, it will build faster. But the problem is you never really know. You can't predict, you could do the most clickbaity title, the most the video that you think is gonna do really well, no one's ever done it before, the thumbnail's great, but the algorithm or for some reason it just doesn't perform. So I'm always really cautious about chasing those viral videos. Because a lot of the time you, you're so focused on producing this video that's gonna, you're thinking this is gonna do really well. Like, There's gonna be so many views. This is gonna blow me up. This is gonna get me to 10,000 subscribers. It never really never works works. out. So one of the things that I'm, I'm figuring out is, is when you're when you're doing that video which you love, you know it's your passion. You know it's yeah, your niche. That's the one that really catches on. With my videos, like doing an M1 Mac review, because I know it right now is Apple's trending, it doesn't do that well. But when I do something about sketching, like appropriate beginner's guy, that I never thought would be like the top video, because I love it, because I'm, and like it, it shows in the actual video, those ones do sick. Not to probably repeat every YouTuber out there, but I think the most important thing is being authentic. And if you're producing a video that you really love and you really enjoy making, it's going to be more authentic than a video that you're forcing to do really well. It comes across. Yeah, exactly. It does come across. Yeah. You, you want to be, you want to be there in the video, smiling and engaging and being excited and, and up for it. I've done it many, many times before. Yeah. I've sat down, tried to film a video, and it's been a mess yeah. because I'm not know what I'm talking. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's structured poorly. 
it's dreadful and you can tell with the way I'm speaking and the way I'm in interacting with the camera is that you can tell I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to be there because I don't care. Okay, so quick test, what's your worst video? What's the worst video you've done? Like the one that you thought was going to be sick but it was so bad, you're like, what the fuck happened? Uh, to, 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 see, to see if this theory is true. <laughs> I'd say the worst one I've done recently, <laughs> no, to be fair, it's very recent actually, the last few months. I'd say it's the ASMR architecture model. Because, <laughs> firstly, I tried to chase the ASMR hype, ASMR get to do really well. Secondly, the model was shit. <laughs> it was so bad, it was the worst model I've ever made before in my life. It sounded pretty cool. When I edited it, it sounded pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is actually quite fun, actually. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. It's quite relaxing. But in terms of actually content itself, dreadful, mate. Someone could as easily just go on YouTube, ASMR one, and do something way better. Mine was awful. I should have done so way better. you forced better. it. You you forced it. I completely forced that one, yeah. And I even did the sponsorship in ASMR. So I said, no, you can't This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yeah, <laughs> worst video I've ever done. It's not, not the worst, but it's up there for sure. Uh, at the end of the day, those videos still end up happening, right? The ones that you just see, like, oh, I'm going to experiment, I'm going to try it. I'm interested in it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You've got to try. You've got you, 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 you to try the new stuff out there. But if, it seems like the theory works. Because yeah. uh, for me, the one that I think has done the worst, it's either, it's either the ones that, I mean, I say this, Give, and, and the video has got a really decent amount of views, but loads of dislikes, or oh, more than I expected. And it's probably because that video was something I kind of forced as well. At the end of the day, you want to produce content that you're happy with, and you want that to be on your content and your platform. There's many videos out there that haven't performed well for me, but I look back at it and I think actually I really like the way I edited that. I like the song in that. I like that part of the bit because I remember that scene and I remember being there and, and that kind of stuff. That, so therefore the views don't really matter to me because I enjoyed making that video and I look back and I've, I I look back on that experience because I've documented it. So some sometimes for me I don't even look at YouTube as a, a money making thing or, or creating a business out of it. It's more of a, it's the passion. a, a passion and a, a documentation of my life really. That's why I started blogging rather than if I wanted to get more views and I want to do really well. All my videos would be sit down videos talking about architecture, breaking down how to do tutorials in Photoshop because they do really well. But I don't enjoy that and I don't want to do that. I'd rather be out and about filming, vlogging, going on a holiday, filming, time with my girlfriend, my family. And I enjoy those videos and I look back and I think that's a really good video, no matter how many views it's got. The last thing I'll, I'll ask you, yeah. This was never by this was never meant to be an interview at all. This just this just naturally happened because we're out here and we've got well we've got something maybe in the works in the future, we'll see. Um, but what's the last thing you've learned, the last valuable lesson you've learned recently doing YouTube or just doing you know anything you know, doing architectural content creation. What's the last most valuable thing you've learned? Potentially the most valuable thing is that you could produce recently. Yeah. Within the past six months. Yeah. You could produce the most amazing content. You could put so much time and effort and plan into an amazing video. You absolutely love the video. But if the title and the thumbnail isn't right, it's not gonna do well. Because within YouTube it's all about that one person looking at it. I wanna click on that. If you don't want to click on it, it's not gonna work, no one's gonna watch it. So you can spend hours and hours and days and, and weeks making an amazing video that you're really happy with, you love it, you have an awful title, dreadful thumbnail, it's not gonna pop. So thumbnail and title is the most important thing in YouTube, I think. And then once they're in, they see the content, they're engaged, they're captured, you have to get them in in the first place. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Most of you are probably already following him, but um, yeah. Hopefully, we're going to be working on something together in the future, yeah? Let's do it.